Hello Legacy Sabers, Marsh here. So this is Unit 9's review from the final packet, Radical Functions. This is the second video of four, ultimately. So in this unit, we focused on rational exponents, how to solve equations containing exponents or radicals, and we did have some extraneous solutions. We also graphed square and cube roots. So very first thing that we focused on is the ability to make a ability to use with exponents and exponent rules. So remember, negative exponents, those moved down to the bottom. I'll change the pen width here. There we go. So, and then you could cross out diagonally and up and down. So if I have an x squared over an x squared, those two can just cancel out, right? So, right now I have 6x cubed over 9y, well, I'd have a y squared down here and a y cubed. So those two y's, you're going to add those exponents. So I'm going to get y to the fifth, right? And then another thing I notice is 6 over a 9, I can simplify that into 2x cubed over 3y to the fifth. That one would simplify entirely. Okay, so then I also had 27 to the 2 thirds power. Remember that converted. So it would be the cube root of 27 squared, which the cube root of 27 is 3. You're going to definitely need that perfect root chart. That will be allowed to be used the entire time during your final. So it would be 3 squared. And 3 squared is, in fact, 9. Then we did some radical operations. So I have cube root of 9 times the cube root of 6. Well, what you could do is multiply them together, right? Cube root of 54, ultimately. And then we broke down cube roots and square roots and fourth roots and fifth roots. So I need to find a perfect cube that goes into 54, which... Um, perfect cubes, that's 8. Well, 3 cubed is 27, right? And 27 times 2 is 54. Well, the cube root of 27, that's just 3. So I know my answer to be 3 cube roots of 2. This one, we had to start solving. We had to break down, we had to simplify, we had to get rid of that to the fourth power, which would be me taking the fourth root on both sides, right? Well, remember, if you take an even root, square root, fourth root, sixth root, etc., we're going to get a plus or minus over here. So I'm going to get x plus 4 equals plus or minus. Well, the fourth root is 16. That's a 2. That came from that perfect roots chart. Subtract 4. Now, careful, it's not just plus or minus negative 2. That's not the case it's going to be, I'm technically solving two problems, right? Solving x plus 4 equals 2 and x plus 4 equals negative 2. So one of my answers is going to be negative 2. My other answer is going to be negative 6. If we plug it in, it should in fact work. No extraneous solutions came from this problem. Okay. Then we did some more operations here, so I have to, when you're adding and subtracting radicals, you need to get it so that they have a common radicand, aka the number underneath the radical needs to be the same. So if I have the square root of 27, I'm going to break that down into the square root of 9 and the square root of 3. 48, I know that's the square root of 16 and the square root of 3. Huh, I wonder why they both have the square root of 3 because they're going to have like radicands. Square root of 9, that's 3. Square root of 16 is 4. Now, these two numbers, this 4 and that 3 and that stuff, I need to multiply, because it's 2 times the square root of 27. And the square root of 27 is 3 square root of 3. So I'm going to get 6 square roots of 3 minus 12 square roots of 3. And then, when you are subtracting like radicands, all you need to do is look at the numbers in the front. So 6 minus 12, that is a negative 6 square roots of 3. So, 
solving. So this one I gotta get rid of that square root first. So I'm gonna square both sides. Now be careful. If you have x plus two quantity squared, that is not x squared plus four children. It is x squared plus two x plus two x plus four. Because you gotta expand that into x plus two times x plus two. Okay? Don't fall into the trap of what your mind thinks it should be. Then I also am equal to 2x plus 7. Um, I'm going to subtract everybody to this side. So I'm going to get x squared plus 2x minus 3. So I'm going to get x plus 3, x minus 1 equals 0. Right? Because two numbers then multiply to give me negative 3, but add together give me 2. Positive 3, negative 1. So I'm going to get two answers. Negative 3 and a positive 1. But radicals, you did have to worry about no negatives, right? Because we don't want any I business to show up. So I'm going to plug in negative 3. I'm going to get a positive 1 out there. That's fine. And a 1 works as well. So that one, both of those check out. No worries there. And then number 7 was graphing. Notice this is a square root. So then I need to start thinking, oh, parent table for square root. What was it? Well... We need to think, what are the perfect squares that I could plug in? Well, um, I can't plug in negatives, right, into this, because that would be an I. Um, I can plug 0 in, because the square root of 0 is 0. Uh, square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. So notice, guys, how I kind of built it that way. Now I need to do some stretching, moving, stuff like that. So this is my stretch. It's also reflections, because that negative 2. Um, this is a right move, right? And this is a up move. So I'm going to multiply or add 5 to my x values. So I'm going to add 5 there. This side, I'm going to multiply by negative 2 first, because you multiply before you add. Then I'm also going to add 1. So my new table is going to be... Uh, 5, 6, 9, and 14. Um, multiplication, so 1, negative 1, negative 3, negative 5. Okay, so let's graph those dots. 5, 1, 6, negative 1, 9, negative 3, and then 14, negative 5, something like that. And it's going to go Okay, it's a square root graph. It's kind of like a shooting star going off to the side. Okay, it's never going to go this way because I can't have any negative numbers, right? Couldn't plug in a negative 1, so I can't have a dot over here. That's why it stops there and goes where, it, or it starts there and goes off to the right. Um, my domain, it looks like I'm starting at 5. Notice how I have a bracket there, though, because I am touching at 5. I'm going off to infinity. My range, I start at negative infinity, and I'm going up to 1. And I am including 1 because I hit right on that particular number. And that's the end of this section of the study guide. Um, this third video will be on conics, so continue on if you need it or skip to the next video that you need for studying. With that, see you later, Sabres.